don't panic, I don't go into it. Well, hello everybody, it's uh, Suffolk Andy here. In a gorgeous day here in Suffolk. They say it's six degrees, but they reckon with the wind chill factor, it's more like one. But hey, who's complaining? Look, blue skies. Roads are a bit damp and nasty as usual, but you don't ask them more when you're in this part of the world. Anyway, had uh, quite a few responses from my last couple of vids and uh, answered them all. And I'm up to date with all yours. I've watched them all and uh, very enjoyable, boys and girls. Anyway, I thought to myself, what shall I talk about today? And uh, there was one subject that uh, I've been meaning to talk about to talk about for quite a while. And uh, one is the test. Now you're thinking, what's he talking about the test for? He's bloody done it years ago, which I did. Well, one young lad said to me, Andy, can you uh, tell me about your test? And I thought, do you really want to know? You know, because in my day, it was a lot easier than what you boys and girls have to put up with now. So I thought I'd quickly run you through it. So uh, I don't want you to be pig sick, because you know, all this stuff you have to do. But I'm gonna show you what, or talk about what we used to do. Right, you used to turn up at the uh, test center with your bike, and uh, the examiner would be there. And uh, he was on foot. He never followed you on a bike or anything like that. He was on foot. And the first question he'd asked you is, can you see that uh, number plate over there on that car? And you had to sort of say what it was, and then he'd say, right, proceed to your bike. Well, I had a mate called Gary Chambers, and uh, he said to him, can you read that number up on that plate? And he went, what number? And he said, you're failed, and that's as far as he ever got. So you had to have decent eyesight to see these number plates. Well, anyway, He'd say to you, leave the test centre, turn left, then turn left again into the street up the road and wait for me. So you used to do that, but you knew, because people would tell you that he'd be watching you um, leave the test centre. And there's a pavement that used to run between the road and the test centre. And everybody told you at the time, stop, look at the pavement, move over the pavement and look up and down the road and proceed if that was safe, which you did and indicate with your hand, hand signals. So anyway, he done that up to the next top of the road and waited for him. Well, he turned up and now this road was like in a, a square, you know, four rows together. So you had one main road and three ordinary sort of suburban roads. So he'd say to you, right, I want you to go up to the top, turn right, turn right, turn right, turn right, and meet me back here. So off you used to go around the, uh, the square, as they say, and uh, make sure you've done all your hand signals and look behind you and everything else and wait for the cars if any cars came, and round you went. We've done this a couple of times. We thought, oh, this ain't too bad. So then he'd say to you, he'd pull you over, and he'd say, right, I want you to do an emergency stop. He said, I want you to go round the block again, and in some time, when you're going round that block, I will stand in front of you with my board in the air, and you will bring your machine to a stop. I don't know how true it is, but I have been told that one or two of them got friggin' run over. Jump out in front of you and people have gone, oh shit, and run them over. I don't know how true it is, but that's what I was told. So yes, you went round and uh, he uh, would jump out on you with his board up in the air, and you had to bring your machine to a halt. So uh, then he'd say, right, he said you've been doing all right hand corners i need to see you on left hand corners so he said right go around the block and when you get to the main road turn left and uh, up you went he said and there's a road up out to your right turn into there do a u-turn come back down the road so he could actually see you doing this left hand turn and you only ever done it once um and when you got up and done the u-turn i don't know why but you're always shitting yourself that uh he was up there, but there was no way he could do it, but he'd done it all properly and everything else, even though you knew he was out of sight. He used to cut, he came back, and he'd say, right, back to the test centre. That was your riding part done. So off you went to the test centre. Then come your theory bit, boys and girls. You get his little book out. 
and in there was all these pictures of signs, you know, road signs. And he'd say, what's this one? And you'd say, you know, stop sign. What's this one? High winds. What's this one, you know? And it went on for about 10, 10 uh, sort of symbols. And then uh, he'd say, right, you're passed or you haven't. Luckily I passed, I didn't, there weren't many people who bloody failed. But that was our, uh, our test in the 70s. Now you poor buggers have to do all this other stuff, don't you? You have to do the CVT and then you have to do your theory and your mod one and all the rest. I feel sorry for you, I really do. But the other thing was, and I've said this in the earlier vlog I done, I, um, I actually passed my test on a scooter, a Lambretta, never rid a bike. Even though I liked bikes, all my mates were on Lambretta, so it was like peer pressure, yet you had to have one. So I passed my test on a Lambretta, but in them days you could ride a 250, up to a 250, and uh, before you took your test. So that was handy, because a lot of the uh, Jack bikes were coming through on 250s and they had a bit of bloody go to them, you know. So a lot of bikers had some decent bikes. But uh, I'll tell you a quick story before I finish this one up. After I passed my test, I knew I liked motorbikes more. And as you know, as you grow older, your mates sort of split up and get girlfriends and marry and all the rest of it. Uh, I hate that scooter more and more and more. And I'm talking only a matter of a few months, months or a year, something like that. Anyway, I was walking past my local motorbike shop and outside this motorbike shop was this beautiful Suzuki 750 Black. And I looked at this bike and I thought, man, I've got to have it. I've just got to have this bike. It's fantastic. You know, I've got to have that bike. So, you know, it was a lot of money then because we weren't earning a lot of money, but the bikes were still quite expensive like they are today. And, uh, the next day I went back, put my deposit, got me hire purchase. Bob's your uncle, I got the 750 Suzuki. Well, the trouble is, he said to me, he said, well, you can pick the bike up in a couple of three days. Come and pick it up. You know, we'll get it all ready for you, like they do. I thought, great. So off I went to pick it up, a couple of three days later. Got to the shop, there was the bike, all ready to go. Gates open, so I could go off. And I said to the uh, guy who ran the shop, Hey, do you ride it, mate? And he went, what? I went, hey, do you ride a bike? He said, what do you mean, hey, do you ride a bike? I said, well, I've never ridden a motorbike. I've only ridden a scooter. He was like, you're having me on, ain't you? I went, no, I've only ever ridden a scooter, but I'm gonna ride that bike. So he had to show me how the gears worked. I never used a geared bike, you know, because on the scooter, you, you uh, had gears, but you had to turn the handlebars to engage them and you had a clutch so it weren't too bad so uh, yeah he shooed me out of change the gears and whatever but I got on that bike and I went down the road and that was a, a small road thank god it was I was all over the place I was going all across the road backwards and forwards and you know I pulled back the throttle and frig I went off and I thought oh my god I'm going to kill myself on this friggin thing well I got it home and uh, I thought that art and new one. What I'll do, I'll take it out on a, a road out into the country and uh, get to get used to it, you know? So I've done that, come back. The next day I've done it again, come back. And I got sort of hang of it. I thought, oh, this is all right. So I said to me uh, girlfriend at the time, hey, I said, I'm fed up here, you know, friggin' jobs. Let's go off to Greece. She said, Greece? I said, yeah, let's go off to Greece. Let's take the bike. So I had to run it in, I had to do a thousand miles, I think, to run it in, which I'd done in about a week and a half. Took it back, had it serviced, had its first service. Hey presto, on the ferry, down to Greece. All within about three weeks of getting that bike. And I'll tell you what, I've never looked back. And I'll tell you what, I could never ever drive one of them scooters again, I'll tell you. Ooh, I don't think I could. Look at these roads. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the story of how you used to pass your test in the 70s, boys and girls, in the 70s. Anyway, that's enough for me today. I'm going to try and deal with these friggin' roads. 
they're getting worse and worse. So, uh, safe riding everybody. See you all later. Suffolk Andy.